Happy Tuesday, webheads! Welcome back! Before we get started with this week's top 10 most anticipated, I decided to take Cookie with me on a trip to Starbucks. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, I'm bringing you my top 10 most anticipated comic books for. February 24th, 2021. That's right, guys. It's never too early to start that pull list for next week. And hopefully this list helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And guys, if you want to become a member of Comic Book Corner 2.0 and help support the channel, all you got to do is go on to my home screen, hit that join button. Yes, and you become a member. And I want to thank all of you who take the time for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0, giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and hitting that bell. All right, guys. So now that I'm back from Starbucks and I got my, my strawberry refresher, I'm ready to go. And let's talk about this week's hot seat. There's actually two hot seat books because I'm on the fence if I should jump back on board this series because it just looks cool, but then I always feel lost. And the first hot seat book that we're going to be talking about is Spawn. This is issue 315. This is titled Chain Gang. This is part two. Uh, and it's a new team of Spawn characters. They are She Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and the Reaper. So if you're a Spawn fan, you're probably really excited about this right now. And I remember reading about She Spawn in Spawn issue 300. And the great thing about this book, it's 32 pages. And it's only $3, man. So for the price point, you really can't go wrong with trying out the title. So I wish, man, all these books were $2.99, right? So that's the first one that's on the hot seat. The next one is the Union Issue 3. Now, there's no King and Black banner on this, but it still continues a story arc. And it says the Britannia uh, Project Part 3. So this is... Description says, um, Kelpie goes rogue in the wake of the disastrous Null invasion. So this looks like it takes place after the Null invasion. And she takes drastic action, but when her choices land her in hot water, only Union Jack will be able to save her. Now, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was an entertaining uh, tie-in or series, and I love the artwork, and these characters were kind of intriguing to me, and this was the first tie-in that was released with King and Black, and again, I found myself kind of vested, so I'm going to try this out if it's a regular ongoing now and see what happens with it. It's a regular 28-page book, and this one is $4. Moving on, talking about the King and Black tie-ins, we're still there. This is a book that I do not recommend on reading. It's absolutely horrible. I feel like it just does not tie into King and Black whatsoever. There's been a couple of mentions. This is Namor. This is issue four. This is chapter four. It's about young Namor. Um teaming up with his these people that were the legendary sea warriors called the Swift Tide, and now they became evil as they were trying to find this artifact. Somehow, some way, this artifact is obviously tied into Null. We just haven't gotten there now. These people became evil. Now they're called the Black Tide Wave, and it's just been very boring, very uneventful. It's the tie-in that it's just... Ugh. Uh, it's such a chore to read it, but again, I've been collecting all of these King and Black titles to let you guys know whether they're good, they're bad, they're okay, or whatnot, but I don't recommend this book. And the next one we're going to be talking about is The Return of Valkyries. This is issue three. This has been a pretty solid series. I kind of feel like, though, it's been a little bit all over the place. It's obviously focusing on kind of getting you pumped up for the return of the Valkyrie ongoing that's getting ready to come out. So that's why this book kind of exists. In the beginning, it was tied in because uh, Valkyrie had to take Century's soul to Valhalla. And then we wind up getting the return of um, a Valkyrie. And now it looks like 
Jane Foster is going to be re- uh, teaming up with Danny Moonstar, and they're going to be doing battle against Knowles Warriors. That's what it seems like going on in this particular issue. It's been pretty good. I love the history in issue two on get you up to speed on who Noel is, where he came from, and how he's tied into that celestial where... Um, he cut off the Celestial's head, and the Celestial's head is actually nowhere. Nowhere. So because of him, that's why that place exists. So I thought that was kind of cool how they tied that all in together. So this is a decent book, uh, and if you're interested in Return of Valkyries, you might want to check that out too. All right, the next one is Symbiote Spider-Man. This is issue four. Uh, This one's been kind of all over the place as well. I'm not a huge fan of this version of Symbiote Spider-Man. Again, it just seemed like a a book to sell the Black Knight tie-in. And then ever since from there, it's been kind of uneventful for me. Uh, Not my favorite book. If you want to skip this one, I think you can skip it. It doesn't really matter. And then the last book, But not least, we have Black Cat Issue 3, which has been a phenomenal tie-in. This is one of the best tie-ins besides the Venom tie-in, where Felicia goes into battle where she has to recover Doctor Strange. And I think that's been awesome. She recovered Doctor Strange, and... uh, and now she became this, this god, this Asgardian goddess as well. Great artwork, great dialogue, great battling, nice pacing. This is a book that you should read if you're into the whole King and Black event in itself. All right, so let's move on now to the regular books here. Coming in at number 10, my top 10 most anticipated is... Amazing Spider-Man issue 60. Um, this has dropped way down on my list here. And it's it's hard to put this book on my list, but it's issue 60. It has Mary Jane. It's got Peter Parker on the cover. And every time I, I want to give this book hope, it, it's, for some reason, it just lets me down. I'm not into Kindred anymore. I'm not into the current story arc right now. We'll see where it goes. This obviously has to do with Mary Jane and Peter's relationship. It's become a constant strain, which is a story thread that we've seen throughout Spider-Man's history, right? And we're going to see if there's anything left in their relationship. So we'll see what happens with that. 28 pages, $4. How it ties into the story that they set up, I have no idea. But again, we'll see what happens. I always like to give it the benefit of doubt. Hopefully, it actually surprises me. All right, so next, coming in at number nine, we have Dark Detective issue four. Um, This is the conclusion. This also has the additional stories of the Red Hood Part 2. So, Dark Detective Part 3 was okay for me. It wasn't the best one. I thought Issue 2 was the best. Now we're going to get the conclusion to this. So, I'm excited for it. I think Tamaki has been uh, a nice surprise on Detective just in general here. Um, I think her writing's been solid. Probably one of the better books I've seen her write. And I also love Dan Mora's artwork. It's absolutely outstanding to look at. And I think he helps her tell the story. Okay. So, we get to see... um, Hopefully, Bruce Wayne uncover this murder, and he's been investigating these drones, and yeah, it's been okay. This book is 48 pages, and this one is $6. All right, so moving on to number eight, we have Captain Marvel. This is issue 26. Now, Captain Marvel has been thrusted into the future, and this Earth is on the brink of destruction, and she comes across characters that are in her future, like next generation's heroes, like Thor's daughter, for instance, right? And we have Namor's son that's in here that's powering up this portion of Earth, but he's using other um heroes to power it like magic for example and we had to see captain marvel actually go out there and try to rescue magic and it was kind of cool and we get to see thor's daughter actually wield the hammer for the first time there's some cool dialogue in this series and the artwork is really great and we get to see Carol Danvers actually gets supercharged in the last issue as well. So this one has exceeded expectations. Kelly Thompson continues to impress me with Captain Marvel. Gives it a decent direction. 
and this is worth the read 28 pages and this one is four dollars all right so moving on to number seven we have something is killing the children issue 15 so here's the description now in the order of saint george needs a scapegoat to hide the existence of monsters from the world erica's actions will determine what is to become of archer parks and ultimately the house of the slaughter so this looks like this is possibly the beginning of a new story arc it's 32 pages four dollars this book has been really well done people are huge fans of it i enjoy it as well what I want to do is I want to go back and read all these issues back to back to see if it reads better that way. I feel like, you know, you get into the book with this one issue and then it's just like, oh, wait, shit, I got to wait for a whole month. And I think this series probably reads a lot better in trade. However, I really enjoy it. I love Erica Slaughter. I love the artwork. It's so creepy eerie and i love the mysterious look of Eric, erica slaughter as well so check this one out guys if you have not read it in trade yet all right next is another independent book from image comics this is rick remender's scumbag this is issue five this book is insane as we just get the the epitome of the world of a guy who's out there trying to save the world because he accidentally gets injected with this I guess you want to call it super soldier serum, but he's this big reject of a character who makes all these demands that he's like, oh, if I want to save the world, I want drugs, I want concert tickets, I want sex dolls, I want robots, I want flying cars, and you get to see all that stuff in this series, and it's absolutely hysterical. Now, the bad guys in the last issue wind up giving him an offer to join their team, and they can give him a whole island of shit that he can live on, so... <laughs> It just keeps getting better and better. I don't know how it can how it can top the last issue, but remember, this book is for mature readers only. All right, so moving on to number five, we have a book that I really enjoy. This is Year Zero, Volume Two. This is issue four. This is the first book from AWA Upshot that has a volume two. Year Zero was, a, uh, I think, a great hit for them. And it's about the zombie apocalypse, but it's about different point of views of how people handy, handle the zombie apocalypse. And this volume takes place a little bit longer down the road on how people are learning how to adapt and take care of these particular uh, zombies. We get to see... Um, a Norwegian sea captain who has uh, some grandchildren where they have to try to go from getting their boat overtaken to finding a place to live and then the places zombies are overrun by it we wind up getting to see a girl who's pregnant in a big box store that she used to work at and ever since she had intimate relations with a co-worker she's been trapped in there so she's going to get ready to have a baby in there and there's people going to invade that store because they want the supplies in that store we get some some doctor who's been hoarding all the medicines to see if he can find a cure for everything and and now he wants to go and, and go to another um, island or a reservation or wherever where all these other people are at. This has just been a really fun book. Oh, and then you get this cartel guy who's just like this drug overlord who thinks he's like, you know, obviously the, the whole... Um, only man in the world with women by his side and has all the power but there's people actually hunting him down looking to kill him so there's a lot of great stuff in this book i definitely recommend it it's a little bit of a different take on the zombie book i have all good things to say about it 32 pages this one's four dollars all right, next, coming in at number four, and I feel like this book is really heating up right now. This is Wolverine issue 10. Issue nine was probably the best issue that I've read of the series so far. We wound up getting to see Wolverine go to a secret auction as Patch. His cover was broken as he wound up finding out that they were selling off a limb or his hand with claws attached to it, and they wound up having... Um, Maverick, uh, they were selling him off as well, and his mission was to retrieve Maverick. Uh, awesome last issue. Love the artwork in it, and it looks like in this issue, finally, these two are going to be working together, but however, Maverick doesn't remember who Logan actually is because his 
uh, mind was actually mind swiped. So really great book, man. Definitely recommend this. Great time to jump on. I think it was issue nine. So this is 28 pages, $4, maybe issue eight. All right. So moving on is another really great book. This one is Maestro War Impacts Issue 2. We get to see the rise of power of Maestro. In the first series, he wound up taking the throne uh, from Hercules, who was the first Maestro. In this next issue, we wind up getting to see him kind of expand his dominant power. And he tries to go to a secret base where Machine Man was in control of this particular base. And uh, Machine Man knew he was coming. He warned his people and uh, he wound up blowing up the whole base that Bruce wound up being in to take over and uh, he got a one up on uh, Bruce Banner which was kind of cool so I didn't think Machine Man had it in him to outsmart Bruce Banner really great book the artwork is outstanding it's a bright and colorful vibrant book I definitely say pick this one up if you haven't read the first volume of Maestro issues one through four you might be lucky. You might be able to still find it on the stands. It's a great read. It's written by Peter David, who did the original Hulk series back in the day. It's definitely a recommend read at 28 pages, and this is $4. All right. So coming in at number two, we have uh, Crossover Issue 4. This is Donny Cates' book. Um, this book seems like it have not come out in a, in a while, um, where we get to see our heroes here wind up taking this uh, kid, trying to bring him back to this comic book world where all these comic book characters came out of uh, comic books and they started taking over this particular part of town and now there's this dome over them. We wind up seeing this organization take all these, some of these heroes that were outside of the dome and capture them. One particular kid has this mission to take out people. He's got this special gun and we get to see our, 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 I guess future lovers come in contact with each other and they have a common mission uh, and here's the description that it says hey kids time for a field trip journey to the strange land of magical magical colorado as our intrepid team of heroes searches for a way to shatter the dome and expose the truth behind the events also how about that last issue right crazy so we get the the secret character at the end of the last issue who's kind of um leading everything so you got to read that issue to find out 32 pages four dollars all right and then last but not least coming in at number one this goes to X-Men issue 18. now issue 17 was kind of like a one-shot de dealing with the Shire and in this issue we get to see uh, Jonathan Hickman go back to the vault. That was a long time ago. I don't even remember what issue that is, but it says inside the vault. It's been a long time since the team went into the vault. A long, long time. So it's 28 pages, $4. This is when X-23 went in there and you never knew what was inside. Time was different. We don't know the ramifications of it. It seemed like a very interesting storyline and they just never revisited. But this is classic Hickman, right? He'll he'll throw something down and like three years from now, you're finally going to get the, the outcome of that particular story. And that's what he's done right here. This is probably going to be a lot of people's anticipated book of the week because this was a very good story here and i feel like x-men has lost its way a little bit and it needs to get back on top especially since they're releasing so many different x books like they're releasing x corp like who cares about that book i don't want to see them in a flipping boardroom just talking about politics all day oh yeah how much money did we sell in crocan uh flowers there uh monet well i don't know archangel you got the numbers in front of you like what is that book gonna be about right anyway x-men 18 the main series this is where the story is at hopefully this delivers and it doesn't disappoint so guys there you have it there are my top 10 most anticipated comic book covers of the week now i want to know what you're looking forward to reading this particular week and again guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe don't forget to hit that bell and if you like comic book covers i'm going to leave you a video series right here What's not going to disappoint where you get to vote on your favorite comic book cover of the week. So until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, and I'll see you guys real soon. Take care, guys. Bye.